ladies and gents. Time to waste. We don't have any. You're going to need to pause this video occasionally because I'm going to be going fast. I'll give you the quick overview. It goes like this. We're going to start off by installing one trainer. We're going to prepare our data set. We're going to load our one trainer presets. We're going to check our training settings. We're going to define our concept, which is our data set. And then we're going to start training. This is all stable cascade LoRa training with one trainer. First things first, let's go check out one trainer. So if we go over here, we can see that this is the project that we're looking for, one trainer. If I take a look inside the um, install bat, it's referencing requirements. If I go inside requirements, I can see that it's referencing CU118 and 2.12 CU118. Links will be in the description. If I search for that at that location, it gives me these. I know which one I want because I'm using Python 3.10. So that's it. I download this. I put the file inside a folder like this. The location where I want to install and then open a command line and just follow the instructions. Now, why am I doing it like this? Why didn't I just run the install bat? Well, it's because I want to show you how to do this if you have a bad internet. So you can download the main PyTorch, okay, put it in the folder like I just showed you. And then what we're going to do is we're going to clone it. So here we go. Now it's cloned, we're going to go into the folder and we're going to create a Python virtual environment so it doesn't affect our system Python. As soon as that's ready, we're going to activate. So this is all in the main instructions, okay? The only deviation is that before I run requirements.txt, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my, uh, my folder. I'm going to drag that pipe, that pipe, that torch model in there. I'm going to F2, control A, control C, take the file name, go back to my terminal. So what we're doing is we're manually installing the big three gigabyte torch file or whatever, how but two and a half gigabyte torch file. It's not that big, but it might crash out a bad internet connection. So this way you can do it with no worries. Okay. That's going to take a minute. Once that is done, we will run the requirements.txt. Okay. And then you're done. Ah, yes. Do you know what? That's a good point. If you see this message, go ahead and copy it in because you may as well upgrade PIP while you're at it. Now, of course, that was your EN virtual environment PIP, not your system PIP, which is why you're seeing that if you've already done that in the past and we're wondering. So, yeah, we run our PIP install our requirements now. It's going to see that we've already installed the big torch and it's just going to install everything else to match. So that's perfect. Once this is complete, we type deactivate. You know what? Let me type. There we go. Deactivate. You always want to deactivate your VNV because at the end of the day, the batch file is going to re is going to just start it right back up again. Okay. So once we've done installation of one trainer, we are now ready to take a look at our data set. So that's pretty straightforward. I've used a test set from uh, an old model I just generated with 2.1, some new images put them all in here, gave them the same caption. So it's literally 11 images with the same caption because that's how I test a fragment of a LoRa. Okay. Um, and obviously you would add more images for a bigger set, but it's quicker to just do training runs on something small. In any case, there's a bit of variation there, but they are all consistently the same. It's the same concept. Okay. Right. So all you need to have is Files and images matching. So the file names match and then the caption describes the image. That's all you got to do. Nothing crazy. So take the path. All right. You're going to need that. And then we're going to open up one trainer. So you open up one trainer with start UI on Windows. Start UI. <laughs> it's going to activate our ENV and launch us into the UI. Okay, so when we first get in here, now we've got our UI open, we're going to want to load our presets. So top left corner, we're going to be doing Cascade today, and we're going to be doing LoRa. So as soon as it's finished loading, I'm going to go LoRa. All right. There is one thing that we want to do, so let's just take it in order. 
now we've got our preset loaded. We need to finish setting up. So I've put a link in the uh, article, which takes us over to stability and gets the Fnet encoder, which is required to be downloaded manually. We're going to copy that and it's going to go into our one trainer. So I created the folder called models because it wasn't there. It does create itself once you start using the software, but I just created it. And I put the Fnet encoder inside models. All right. And it's super easy. All you got to do. I mean, I just copy the name for this for this easiness. If I go to model where it says manually, because I put it in place, I can just type model, uh, model slash, and then there's the file name. Okay. I think it's actually models. So there you go. One trainer models. Fnet encoder models, Fnet encoder. All right. And that, that's all you need to do. That's literally ready to go now, uh, which is amazing. Um, however, we've still got some more steps. So we've, we've, we've got the preset. We put the stable cascade. It's ready to go. All we need to do is just confirm a couple things. So this is how we get our training, uh, data set in. We go over to the concepts tab, we click add concept, we select the card, and then we put our address. So wherever we put our data set, that's the path. So you pick it. Don't need to change anything else. It can do recursive, it can do repeats, it can do image and text augmentation, but you don't need to change any of that. So I've already got my data set in here. You can also toggle them on and off. So it makes it easy for you can also make additional configs. So you can have groupings of concepts. Concepts contains this. I can make another one that doesn't. It contains a bunch of other stuff. So we've now defined our concept. So you should have already, but you'd never click start without knowing what you're doing. So give this a read. There are additional options in the three dots. Okay. So some optimizers have got some extra options, which you'll find in there. You got your SNR gamma, you got your offset noise weights, you've got your learning rate, epochs, it's all here. Okay. And once you're happy with it, uh, and if you find one that you like, you can obviously save it as that. And I've got one of mine in here. Um, and uh, that's pretty much all you got to do. So then you just click start training. And you can open up the tensor board and look at the graphs as well while it's going along. So that is the training side of things. Once your training finishes, you're going to find the model inside one trainer models. Like here's an example of one of the LORAs that I just finished today. It's rank 16 and it's 56. I think I trained a rank eight and it was 20, 20, 28, so a bit, bit smaller. All right, so that's pretty st standard stuff we'd expect to see. Um, if I go to my output results, uh, this would be an example of no LoRa being loaded. And so would this. See, these are both the same seed, and then this is the same seed with the LoRa loaded. And so when I take a look at the concept that was trained, that's actually done a pretty good job of, um, of learning that. Uh, I think it took about 40 minutes to train with uh, batch one. And I think it needed about, I think it was like 12.8 gigabytes of VRAM, <laughs> something like that. But again, your system won't get the same as mine. You might get better or worse. All right. Uh, and I'm training at 1024, 1024, all the good stuff. And finally, hitting that 10 minute mark, we're now in comfy. So uh, I've just used the Argus text to image for Cascade. And then I've experimented with throwing in different ones. I found I did get slightly better images by using the Inspire pack with the Laura Loader block weight. But because all of the blocks aren't actually being respected yet, you don't get the full. So once Laura gets fixed, we'll be able in UIs, we'll be able to use block weights properly. But for now, um, the alpha Laura down and Laura up weights are missing. 
Um, and this is just about, there's a lot of different types of Laura, so no one's really wrong, okay? It's just that there are so many Lauras and uh, <laughs> it's difficult to find the one that everyone's using. <laughs> so they're converting the keys basically and working on converters for us. So I would just wait for that good work to get done and then we'll, we'll know what we're doing from there. So you can train your Lauras. The Laura won't need retraining anyway. That's one thing at, at least. Laura is trained with the keys. It's just the UIs aren't actually rendering them fully. But, uh, you know, it's just going to probably be a bit sharper, I think. So what I will do there, I think I'll leave it. So that's pretty much everything. I will put this, uh, I will put a Laura up for testing so that you've got something to uh, try out if you're not training your own. So you can at least, you know, have a bit of fun with a Laura. I think that now that the training is out, people are going to start training a lot more Lauras on Cascade. So expect to see more releases from Cascade. Um, and I know I, I'll be, I'll be doing a lot of training experiments to get to grips with it. And then SD3 has arrived too. So we've just had this last week of madness with Cascade and then we've got Stable Diffusion 3 is on the horizon. I've got access, but I haven't got it yet, if that makes sense. They've let me in, but it's not there. I think you've got to be like red team to actually get it right now or some kind of a stability equivalent. <laughs> so, right. That's all I got for you. I'll see you in the next one.